Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to play a little bit with, uh, with the Hantec. It's an LCR meter and it is the Hantec 1832C. And uh, this is the lower model. I think in the past they were called the TO11 and the TO12. Then this would be the 11. So it only goes up to 40 kilohertz, while the other one goes up to 100 kilohertz. So for the lower values, that gives you an extra scale, which is nice. But uh, this is the lower one, and I bought it in the 1111, in the crazy 1111. So I had a really good deal on it. I didn't have batteries, I found out later, so I needed to order those uh, those batteries. But uh, it has arrived, so let's play. Well, the boxes of Hantec are usually not that special, it's just a brown uh, box, so I'm not going to show it. But I do like this uh, protective casing. And you can put your wires here. And it comes with two clips, so you can measure your components but there is also a space and this is kind of universal you can just put a clip I have one for that uh, but you need to order that uh, separately and uh, with Kelvins and then you can just lock that in so we're gonna play with both well and it has about the same uh, look as their oscilloscope I have here the O1 and uh, as you can see, the size is uh, more or less uh, the same. So it is from that uh, range for sure. I did find something weird, to be honest, because if you open the USB where you charge it, the USB is far, far, far away. So probably the machine inside is a lot smaller than the oscilloscope. And the USB cable that is provided is a very special one that is very deep. So, don't lose your cable. Yeah, and I already did show you uh, the Matrix 5000 series or the Ivy Tech. Uh, that one was around 600 euros uh, and it was a precision LCR. So, that was uh, pretty expensive. I have here the, the Rosui. It is the 4090C. I think that one was around uh, 300. And I'm just want to know if this one is also good because depending on where you live with the shipping and the tax or not these ones start uh, around 100 so that could be really interesting well as I mentioned there are two models this is the 1832C but you also have the 1833C and uh, that one goes up to uh, 100 kHz this one only does up to 40 and that means in the lower ranges that is in the micro honeys and in the picofarads there instead of this one goes from 0 to 40 scale while the one that goes up to 100k can do 0 to 4 so that means in the lower scale you add a little bit extra let's see what it does it is immediately in auto mode the range is also in auto the level is 600 millivolts that is uh, RMS and if you would have the 1833C, then you can also select here 300 millivolts. But uh, yeah, this one can only do 6, so that's about the only difference. Well, I started immediately to play a little bit with, uh, with the menu. And the menu only has language, auto power off, backlight setting, and the last power on state, or you do default. And the default means? It goes to Chinese, I can show you that, and you can switch on and off the beep, that, that is about it. You can see the firmware. So if we switch it off now, and switch it back on. It even says in the manual somehow, don't switch it on and off too much, which I thought was a bit weird. Because, yeah, you don't want to think about it, you just want to... So default is in that sense not a good setting. You prefer to have it on the... And before you ask in the comments, I did look at the EEV block and there are people working on trying to hack them because the, the 1832 and the 1833, they look a lot alike. Um, but people found a way to hack the firmware or 
uh, they need to remove some uh, little re jumper resistors. But then uh, by now the status is that uh, on that extra range on that 100k, they were still not able to properly calibrate it or store the calibration. So uh, for now, what I've seen so far, it is uh, not a good solution to hack yourself. Then it's better just to spend a little bit more because of this uh, calibration that cannot be stored. Well, I think we uh, just leave it in the auto mode and then we're just going to uh, measure some components and maybe we can even compare it with, uh, with the Rosui, the Victor right there. Uh, first, I will do the two wire and then later I can try with my uh, Kelvins with the extra guarding. And uh, well, I advise to usually just to calibrate before use. Well, the calibration is done by pushing along the call button or the rail right here, long push, and it gives a beep and it does nothing. Well, I found out <laughs> in auto mode, it just doesn't do that. So uh, it only works in manual mode. So you need to click it first to manual. And then, well, I keep the clips open. So that will be an open calibration. And they say, well, insert shorting piece for short or just uh, leave it open for open. So I would just leave it for open. And now it's going to do a little calibration for open. Well, that took a while, like two, two minutes. Um, but I don't know if you noticed. And, uh, but it is doing corrections or on uh, 50, 75 and 100 kilohertz. So the device is able to do it or it's just skipping that. But it did take a long time. Oh, that is interesting. Now we also need to do a short uh, calibration. Um, they say you need to short it here, but if you want to measure with cables, I I would put my short calibration like this. So I don't understand why they provide this shorter. Maybe if you want to put your components directly in here, but uh, yeah. If you use this clip, you do your short calibration also, including your cables, I would think. So here we go again. So that short uh, calibration worked a lot faster, uh, really a lot faster because uh, with the open, it was like between two and three minutes. I didn't check exactly, but it was more than two. And this was done in, in 30 seconds. So I'm just going to leave it in auto mode. And so this is what we're going to play with. I have here a little board. It has 10 ohms up to 100k. It has 100 picofarad up to 1000 nanos. And I have here another LCR. And this one also has milliampere and a capacitor from some nanofarads that is great and this is from the dmm check plus and these are one percent uh one percent resistors here i have here some capacitors and i have here some inductance some coils so this is also great and i have a calibration sheet of this one uh measured on the uh, i think 8.5 millimeter so we can get really close to a good value. So let's see what Antec thinks about it. So I will just uh, measure all the values, leave it in auto mode. And meanwhile, I uh, write everything down. So later we can compare this with uh, Rosui. Okay, I think the display, you can see, I will leave my light uh, off and uh, keep it in auto mode. And let's see what it thinks about the 10 ohms right here. Here the set, the impedance is 10, 0, 0, 0, 7. So that is 10, I would say. Then we have the 100. This is 100. I will write it down later. So this is just resistance 99.6. Nine, 
Dat doet denk ik. Ja, denk ik. Dat is goed. En one hundred k. Look at that. Oké. Okay. Let me write it down and then we go to the caps. Oké, okay, move over to the capacitors. I have here 104 picos. And it is compared to a Chinese meter, but let's just write it down. So this auto mode seems to work uh, very nicely. Now I wonder, we do the same with the DMM check plus. So we're going to try some inductance, some capacitance and some resistors. Just see if it automatically switches or not. Well, the auto mode is not detecting this. So we needed to put it by hand to uh, to milliamps, And then you can also change it from serial to parallel. But with this value, we need to choose the serial mode and then instead of 10 it says 10.5 and what does it say here yeah 10.63 <laughs> so uh, oh, 10.7 it says now very very close to the real value that is actually nice I will write this down and go through the other values Okay, now I have some bigger values here. It is a huge coil right there. And this should be uh, 940 milli -hours. So let's see. I put in the L. I put my pins in because then it's better to grab. Let's see if it will detect or we need to switch again manual. And it will go to resistor mode so again we need to switch it ourselves switch it over and it says 916 16.2 and on the sticker it says 914 so it is not that far off and also we haven't compared it so to the cap Put it back in auto mode just to see. Oh yeah, 5071 and it says here 50.705. So I would say that is spot on. Well, the values seem very good, I must say, and uh, they compare very well with the uh, DMM uh, check plus. I will keep a list also of that and uh, we can compare it later but i wonder what it will do if we're going to use the four wire option with the kelvin clips i will do again the calibration i wonder how much it is needed uh, to have this four wire because i'm impressed how, how good it is already and but probably it's on the lower values so maybe those are more precise um, let's do an open and a close calibration again uh, switch to manual mode do the calibration and here it goes well that took again like two three minutes now i'm gonna do the short calibration that one is a lot uh, faster okay that is successful it's stored put it back to auto and let's see yeah uh, here the ohms look at that that is a short oh, with these clips it is a lot easier to to grab the caps but uh, let's see if it's also more precise or not Well, that was a little bit expected that with the four wire on the lower values, it is just, uh, yeah, it is just a little bit more precise. So let's have a look how the Hantec now compares against my Rosui. 
the Hantec is one third of the price and what I have seen now it looks very nice so let's see okay that are uh, a little bit surprising result to be honest because I really thought that the Rosui would be uh, be best and then the four wire on the Hantec with this uh, adapter and then last the two wire but it doesn't seem to be let me show you the results so I highlighted the results which one is uh, closest by the real value and as you can see here I have the, the Hantec with the two wire with the simple plugs here it's the four wire and here is the Rosui Victor and as you can see most in the values are actually in the first column which means that it's just a simple two wire uh, but none of the values uh, really stand out they are uh, very equally matched but this this is really a surprise that the two wire is actually pretty good if you look better at the machine I was just only using the outer mode uh, but you are able also to switch it over to resistors if you want to force it to that setting or to the capacitors or to your coils and also you can change then your parallel mode or serial mode and that has to do if you have high values or big values then uh, you can change that over you can change the frequency the range and you can the level there is a button for level but it doesn't change because this is the simple version and the speed that is the sample speed in the display and if you set it very fast it's usually pretty nervous so the default is uh, slow I think with this one so I did try to install the software but it doesn't want to connect somehow and this is what it looks like but I don't see any con any connect button or a com port button or so it is a bit unclear how you need to connect it and at what port it is looking if I look at the device manager um, here then you can see that it is detected if I go to the downloads there are two types of drivers you have an old one and a new one I installed first a new one and then it just installs the whole key chart key side connection manager thing oh, that's all very nice but it doesn't help me so then I went to the old driver and I took the highest version Windows 8 64 bits I installed the driver okay it seemed to have installed it now I can click on finish and I don't know what this is but here we can see now it created an extra com board maybe we can now connect no, still it does not connect and it, it seems to be working because but I don't see where you can change the com board setting because clearly it's here and if I pull the plug it will be gone yeah put it back in it is here so it's clearly the device but somehow I think we need to set here that we need to connect it to this port 14 but I really don't see how and where so that was a little bit of a surprising result it is actually quite nice and uh, well, I think it's almost uh, the same price as these peak devices only this one has a lot bigger display the device is a lot bigger so uh, I think it's a nice one and well you need to decide yourself if you if it is worth because this thing is around 30 euros 30 dollars and it doesn't improve the measurements that much better not on the values I try it on and the standard wires that come with it are fine enough so thank you for watching and hope to see you next time